Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Kenny Pickett, Matt Canada, the Steelers. Tough one. We're breaking it down. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. Before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the quarterback school Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of the channel. It's a great way to support the channel and you get even more quarterback school content. So if you're interested, hop over there, join, become a member. I appreciate your support. The link is in the video description. As for this video, let's get into it. Kenny Pickett, Matt Canada, the last dance. First play, Miles Garrett gashes our left tackle, destroys the quarterback. Looks like it probably should be a safety. This is not the way you want to start a game. What were we doing all week? Hey, I've heard 95 is good. Maybe we should put two people on him. Okay, let's do a chip. Okay, well, maybe they know that too. So it looks like they're trying to get the tight end, the number three up top, to be a presence here and chip on 95. That's a good idea. I like that. If you're going to do that, let's not have our left tackle overset and let's hang in there and use the chip. Because guess what? The Browns get paid to study football too. They know you're going to do that. So they bring someone off the edge. That then allows 95 to take the B gap on a stunt. And he just beats our left tackle and swallows our quarterback. It's all bad. So it's one thing to say like, okay, this is an, an answer. Great. But they just said the hell with that. We're going to spike that thing and go after him. This is the first play of the game. After a week of game planning? How is that possible? How is that possible? And again, I'm not saying it's no answer. I mean, you can see 88 is there to chip. He's looking to chip. The left tackle oversets. You can't get beat inside in pass protection. You cannot. Especially when you have chip help. Especially when you're playing against an absolute game wrecker. And again, you can see the pressure from the field. 22 has got to go block his guy. So it's the pressure, them just destroying the chip. And my goodness, what a terrible start. Same series, third and 18, first third down of the game. What do you got, third and 18, coach? How about sprint left option? How about a flat Tebow dive? So many issues here. Okay, first of all, we're in the shadow of our own goalpost, which is... People say all the time, but very rarely are you. You can't make this shit up. This is YouTube gold, y'all. Shadow. Goalpost. We are in it. We are running sprint left option. One of my least favorite plays in football. Moving the pocket to the left. All to throw a flat on third and 18. The ball is a sinker. We catch it. Fall. You know, even if we catch it and run, it's still going to be punt from the 10. So we've got issues all over the place, <laughs> but very rarely in an NFL game do you get to actually play from the shadow of your own goalpost and call this crummy of a concept. Now we get a completion. So, I mean, I guess if you're trying to give yourself just a little bit more room to punt, you did it. Congratulations. I've got so many issues with this play. I feel like I'm on record multiple times saying that it's just not good enough, especially from a static formation. Not a good enough throw. We're punting. Next one here. This is a complicated one because it's combination comedy and tragedy. We're going to throw this swing up top to the fast four. Watch how many people tackle this. <laughs> Got three people on the vice tackle. It's hilarious. It's, it's, it's not good. Not great, Bob. Now, the crazy thing about this is that there are a lot of what I would classify as better answers. Some of them would be like what you would Imagine like the best of the best doing. Now, what is the actual play? Okay, so I'm going to draw up the play, and then we're going to talk through exactly how you want to ha handle these things normally. So here's that fast motion. So that's the fast motion. The first thing to do to pay attention to is how does the defense react to this? So the first thing you notice is that there's nobody back here. It's zero, right? It's birds on a fence. Okay, so we're anticipating pressure. We'll talk about that from behind. The actual route combinations, though, are gonna, we're going to get a swing. A hitch down here to the bottom, a post, corner, and what I'm going to call a little under. Okay, this play has made a resurgence in the league, this combination up top. 
the last few years, I feel like it was shelved for decades. Now, my thing about it is normally in universal football, wherever the free runner is, okay, they've got six here. We only have five blocking. One of these players is going to be free if they all rush. So the free runner is right here. In my world and how I think sound universal football is played is you want to throw into the hot most often. So this little hitch right here is where the ball probably should go, in my opinion. That's the hot. Two lines through it, make an H, you're welcome. Okay, now the big baller play would be to be able to come back here and know that, hey, I know a great course. It goes into significant detail about how to beat cover zero. Let's take a shot to the post. We have a post. It's there. Do I have enough time to bail away from the free runner and throw the post? Maybe. I mean, that, that would be a sweet play. That would be a big time play. Save people jobs play. So that's the big baller. And then again, you could just come out here, raise up and throw a swing into three people coming downhill because they adjust poorly to it and get lucky that we throw the swing. So if you're playing quarterback now, what are we supposed to be looking at? Well, we've got this fast motion here. We're supposed to be fast. How does the defense attack? How does the defense adjust in zero? Someone has to go with him. You know, they, they need to either push it or someone needs to run with it. Well, when multiple people run with it, that's an even bigger opportunity for this post. Okay, now I'm not saying the post should be thrown. And don't be the clown that screenshots me throw the post. I'm saying that the ball technically should probably go right here to the hitch because the free runner is right here. Okay, but there, there's a lot of moving parts. None of them, honestly, are that good playing quarterback. I don't like throwing hitches. I think hitches are for rhymes with witches. But right here, the hitch is a pretty good answer down here to the bottom. Now, the post <laughs> walks in. But again, the reason it's so wide open is because the safety down here to the bottom sees that swing thrown and goes to rally to make a tackle with three of his buddies. I mean, it's just, if I had to put it in kind of a, a lump sum, I would say Kenny Pickett looks confused. The quarterback looks confused. And if that's the hot answer, it's not good enough. Now, the other part about this is if that's the hot answer, I want my center turning to the right. You can see here, watch the center. He turns to the left. So when the center turns to the left, that means that the free runner is going to be to the right. The right tackle's in a big duel. He gets beat a little bit inside by six, but the free runner is the guy in the C gap to the right. If that's the case and I'm throwing the, if I'm working the hot to the back here on the swing, I want the center going right and I want the left tackle on the big duel. I get why you wouldn't want to do that because 95 is over there to the left. But at some point, you got to give yourself better answers than this. I mean, just, just look at this picture. What do you want to tell the back? When, when does he catch the ball? Right there. What do you want to tell the back? <laughs> it looks like he just caught a punt and we went for punt block and nobody was in the return. I mean, got no chance there. That is a disaster. Next one here, first and 15. We're going to get a completion up top to 14. I'm going to call this route a lazy stop or kind of a poorly run stop. However it hits you. I think Kenny Pickett-wise, this is as good as you can get. He's in rhythm, keeps a nice base, gets the ball out quickly, decisive, finds the one-on-one, -on -one, looks smooth, balanced. Like that's the ideal Kenny Pickett. What I would expect to get better with this unit, hopefully with a new coordinator, is that the level of detail on the route running here has got to improve. And this, again, this is just my opinion. It's my channel, so it's obviously my opinion. But whatever this route is, okay, I'm going to call it a stop route. So you get to your depth, and normally you would want to get to the depth and come back down the stem. And when I say get to your depth, that doesn't mean like lollygag, and we lollygag, we jogging. No, it means this looks like a vertical. This looks like a go route. You're running as fast as you can. You hit the brakes, you keep your arms pumping, and you come right back down the top of the stem. That's a stop. A hinge to me would be the same thing, except you hinge out. So those are kind of the two different ways to do it. What you don't see in the league very often, if ever, if I'm being honest, is this route where you're not running 100% and your head looks back early. So you just kind of look back and then you just kind of like fall for the next four steps. That to me is very college-y, high school-y, air raid-y, like fallout. Like it's a go, but he cut, he's over the top of me, so I'm just going to fall out. That doesn't fly in the league. Nobody runs stuff like that. This is not how the top of the route is supposed to look. This looks 
sloppy. Again, just watch the top of the route. Watch his head turn. So his head turns right there. He's at the 32, we'll say. 31. He drifts, 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 falls back, and catches it at the 35. There's no precision to that. There's no detail. It's so just like, la, 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 la. Now, it works here because he's wide open. But it will never work versus tight, contested, good coverage on the perimeter. And again, you just see too many things like that in this offense, the way they're playing right now. Next one here, third and four. We're going to work what I'm used to calling a short in or fin route down here to the bottom, number one. I think the Browns do a nice job here of disguising this. I, I think it's the right read. I think it's the correct throw. I would guess and bet a lot of money that the wide receiver is in the wrong on multiple levels here, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. But to me, this is just inside fade from the slot. So we're going to be inside fade here, and we're going to be what I'm used to calling a short in here or fin. Okay, now the thing about this is that when you run this short in, most teams don't want you to just come in and then run in as fast as you can. It's very much a get your depth and then see what's inside. Don't run to get covered. So you kind of come out under control. Now, if it's man, you got to run away. But if there's someone in there, like a flat defender who falls off right here, you don't want to run to get covered. Just come out of this thing and settle here. It almost turns into like a drifty hitch. So at the snap here, this looks to me, if I was playing quarterback, like press man right there. That looks like press man. I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to get this inside fade for a big shot. Well, guess what? They went zone. So he backs out of there. Okay, now I like the short in outside. But you got to come out of this under control. I'm not going to throw you on an inbreaker into a flat defender who's right there. It's just not being on the same page. It's bad football. It looks like we're not coordinated. Again, so watch this thing play out. Watch the corner bail out. He bails off. Now we've got the in, but you got to come out of it under control. Don't run to get covered. So we run to get covered. Now, and if that's what he's supposed to do, it's bad ball. And then the thing that absolutely drives me crazy is this reaction from him. Okay, this reaction right here is one of my, and again, if you're a fan of the channel, you know this, but that kind of reaction like to the sideline, I don't care if it's Kenny Pickett's fault. I don't care if it's the offensive coordinator's fault. Seeing this type of shit from anybody, okay? And I'm not telling Mike Tomlin anything that, or the, even the audacity to think that Mike Tomlin gives a shit what I say, but I'm not telling any football coach in the league that this is what you want to see on your film. But what you do to rectify it is you put it on in front of a team meeting and you do just what I'm doing right here. This kind of behavior on an offense to me is tangible evidence that we are not going in the right direction. I don't want to see shit like that. I don't think it helps anyone. To me, it simply reveals that we're not on the same page and this thing is not going in the right direction because this is a disaster body language wise. And again, it, it's no, no shot at that cat individually. I'm just saying that type of stuff on film is evidence that things are not working. Next one here. Now, so far, I've talked a lot about the coordination of the offense, scheme, X's and O's. This, to me, is double post over. Kenny Pickett goes and gets him a first down with his legs. A lot of people would be like, hey, that's great. Move the sticks. All right. For me here, if I was calling plays or have anything to do with the execution here, I would be frustrated with Kenny Pickett for not throwing the over. This play is often designed to get the ball to the over or the crosser. And so when you have what I'm going to call double post, and again, it doesn't matter if it's a go or a post up top, that's the double post element of it paired with this crosser or over. Almost always you're letting this thing clear and then having this crosser or over come into this space. And this is where the ball's really intended to go. For me, Kenny Pickett has a tendency, and he does it too often, a pattern, where if he has to move at all, his eyes go down like he's looking at the rush. As opposed to, yeah, you have to move off your launch point. You got by a little time. Maybe you take off to run, but you keep your eyes up to make that throw. This is a hit. We need chunks. Yeah, we need first downs. Yes, use your legs sometimes, but not at the expense of a chunk. This is a, this is wide open for me in this offense. We have to hit plays like this. You have to see throws like this. We can't just play with blinders. Oh, I got to move. Panic run. 
to me, that crosser is there. I mean, that 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 is tough, right? Just move right there and throw it. It's coming open. It's it's open. There's no one around him. It's brutal. And it, and again, I think whenever you look at the film, very rarely is it on a one guy. Yes, the coordinator is going to fall on the sword, and I'm this coordinator certainly has some issues, and we'll continue to get into. But it's not just him. This is open. That that's wide ass open, man. You got to move and throw it. You got to throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it. Okay, first down, I guess. Next one here, third and five, my least favorite call of the game. Guess what it is? Scat Hank, third and five. Get the hell out of here. Double middle finger, disaster call. Simply not good enough in modern offense, 2023, week 11, NFL, to call this play, in my opinion. And again, I don't even think Kenny Pickett is playing it like it used to be kind of taught and played. It doesn't make the play better. <laughs> now, <laughs> I mean, it really doesn't. This play back in the day is a sit, and that's the first read. And then it's paired with a hook, flat, hook, flat. And the idea here is that you read it, whoever covers the sit, so this is one, whoever covers this, so say it gets covered from this side, then that means you're going to read the hook flat to that side. So wherever they take coverage away, then we think we have more space for the hook flat. Well, how about this for double middle fingers? It's double covered. It's covered on both sides. Now what are you supposed to do? Play sucks. Okay, maybe if you were to work down here, you would have this hook with the spacing of this thing, but karma's got him tripping. Literally. So third and five, we just raise up and throw a flat. <laughs> man, come on, man. Out of a static formation? We're running Hank on third and five out of a static formation? My thing about this is, how does this even get through the game planning process? How does no one on that staff say, hey, man, we, we don't have anything better for third and five? Third and five, we need to have some like combo coverage beaters. We don't know what the hell we're going to get in third and five. We've got to have some runaways. We've got to have some zone beaters. We've got to have some motion. No, 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 no. I got an idea. Let's throw this Hank concept. Looks like it has answers. I'll raise up. And again, Kenny Pickett is not even playing it the way that I would say it's coached to play. He just catches it. Hook, no. Flat, yes. <laughs> Tackle. I mean, come on, man. Come on. If you're going to go out, at least go out ripping four verticals. Don't go out with this. I don't want to see this play again the rest of the year, Steelers. Please don't do it. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. I sincerely appreciate you doing all of that for the video and the channel. It means a lot to me, so thank you for taking the time. I appreciate you. Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community, great way to support the channel and get even more Quarterback School content. We also have Quarterback School courses. Now, these courses are the most in-depth content available through the channel. These are deep, deep dives on my favorite football topics. The courses are on RPOs, tempos, pass protection, how to beat every coverage is the best selling course. We even have an entire offensive system and framework available for you. So hop over there and enroll. We also have a bunch of free resources available. Check out those all linked in the video description. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. Next one here, second and forever. We're going to work what I'm going to guess is a middle field read or basic to the number two up top. Get his head taken off. I got issues all over the place here. So we're going to run mirrored speed outs. Now, I love the fact that we're at least putting two guys on 95 so that he can't game wreck us. I actually don't think it's that terrible of a throw. It looks like it's behind him, but really it's kind of trying to settle him down. My thing about this, and hey, man, it's just my opinion, so you're, you're going to have to deal with it. But this idea being that these mirrored concepts like this, where we're just going to run up here and run mirrored speed outs, to me, it just reeks of mini camp one installation. Like there's just better stuff to do that than that. Give us multiple answers versus multiple coverages. And again, for me, this is usually a middle field read. So you can run to the middle of the field versus open. So if it's open, you take the middle. If it's closed, you run a basic. And okay, so versus closed. So here's that middle field safety. So it's closed. My thing about this route is I would guess he's short of his depth. So he comes up and kind of like da 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 da, da and then like kind of angles in here like that. Now maybe that's the route. Maybe that's what they do it. 
I don't, you know, I, I'll tell you why I don't like it in a bit. If he got more depth and came across on the true basic here, I don't think he runs into the other safety over here. So there's another safety over here. So when you go shorty on the depth and come across more posty, you, you collision yourself. You're closing your own window as opposed to getting depth and coming in. Because usually you read this thing one outside. So you pick a side, one, one here, one here, two to the middle of the field. So again, and then the other part about this is I don't, if that's the case and you're reading one on the outside, either one of those is there. Throw it, dog. Again, I don't have to like the design or the structure or the architecture, but you can't say that these outside routes are covered, right? I mean, Matt Canada is not choosing to throw the number two. Now, maybe he's telling Kenny Pickett to do it. And again, only they know, but I can tell you that you wouldn't. Here, here's the thing about it that I can say with some pretty good certainty. These types of speed outs like this, you can't have as the number two read because by the time they're the number two, they're out of bounds. They're in the Gatorade, right? They have to be the number one. So pick a side with mirrored routes, mirrored, high school Harry, whatever. But then get your depth, work in the basic. And again, I, I don't know what that route is. It looks like he's trying to run like a stutter, like eh, 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 post. All you do is run across and get smacked. So is it on 11? Is it on the offense? Is it on the quarterback? Yes? Question mark. And again, the throw, it's behind him, but thank God it is because it protects him from the hit. Again, I, I watching Kenny Pickett's helmet, though, it looks like he's working that route the whole time. And I mean, I don't know why it would be. The only reason it's open is because they pressure, right? They're, they're blitzing. I guess they're sort of blitzing. <laughs> Six is taking the long way. Wow. Next one, first and 10. Sprint left option from a static formation. Can't make it up. I mean, the only good thing about this is that you get two people on 95 and he's not going to make a play. But beyond that, there is no option to throw this thing anywhere good. I mean, it's it's terrible. It's just not good enough, man. It's okay. I, I guess my thing about it is if you're so old school and you just got to have it in, you don't have to call it on first and 10. And then how about this? You want to know a bad feeling? is doing, first of all, sprint option anytime, damn near. But the guy you're trying to get the ball to first on this flat, when you come out like this, just watch the flat defender. He literally jumps outside. I mean, there's no chance. <laughs> it's, it's almost like he knows it's it's coming. Like like a Bull Durham style. When you speak of me, speak fondly. I mean, it, like <laughs> showing up my pitcher. I mean, what? <laughs> Look at the slot receiver trying to make a move. There's no there's no one to make a move on, dog. He's running to where you're going. Got no chance. Throw away. Just, I have my hands on my head just because I'm seeing this twice in a game where you go out and you get fired after. I just, I mean, I feel bad. I feel bad for everybody. Next one here, third and eight. Another example of just not being on the same page. Up top, we're going to throw the stop. The wide receiver looks like he's running a go or a vertical. And again, this to me is the type of stuff that will really, really cause issues for coaches because we're not on the same page. They're obviously not doing a good job either coaching, teaching, holding people accountable for what the hell's going on. If I had to guess and bet a lot of money, the route up top that Kenny Pickett is throwing is the route down here that 14 runs to the bottom as the number one. Okay, we've already seen them. They're not afraid to throw mirrored routes. You know, sometimes for many teams, I would say it's hard to know for sure. But the way that this ball is thrown, it's thrown like he's running this hinge or stop. Hinge or stop. And it's third and eight. So that would make sense, right? Right past the sticks. Some teams will convert this versus certain coverage. You know, think maybe cloud. Think maybe press man. Although press man, most people like stops. Uh, it just It's a, just another example of not being on the same page and it just it honestly can't happen at this point in the season 
I actually think Kenny Pickett right here looks pretty good as far as his base, his rhythm. Watch him hit that back foot. No heel click. Get it out with a tight reset. And again, that's operating under the assumption that the wide receiver runs the wrong route. It's just my own anecdotal experience that it's usually on the wide receiver. <laughs> You're welcome for that if you played wide receiver. Again, you know, I would probably prefer to throw it to 14, one-on-one -on -one outside the numbers. But he's the one pulling the trigger. Next one here, third and four. One of the few good third down conversions in this game. The guy coming across in motion or shifting, he's going to run what I'm going to call a choice route here. Throw it to him first down right at the sticks. Great. Yes, please. Now, even with that the case, I still think that this play reveals a significant lack of attention to detail on how this play is often played in the league. So Kenny Pickett, great job getting it out, take a big hit from the game wrecker. But for me here, there's a few things. Now, first of all, the idea up top, not sure what exactly the tight end is doing here, but you'd love to get a chip on the guy who hits the quarterback. Where the ball ends up going, I love this route. So we're going to go He's, we're going to go in and run a seven or corner. We'll talk about that route. But this choice route here, he's going to get in and essentially tailpipe that. Use it as a, a clear, get to the first down marker, and run out. Most times on a choice route or option, you can turn in, run in. Some teams let you run to the post. Okay, that's the, that's the good part on the choice where the ball goes. Thank goodness. The part I don't love here is the ball is on what? The 44? We're going to run this corner route at like six yards, like a six yard corner. I'm not familiar with that route. Maybe that's how they run it. I would say most people would want that thing up and pushed up to like 10, 12 ish and run out of that to create more space for you to actually get the ball. When you run this shorty corner, you're actually just covering yourself. What's a bigger window that or this? I mean, it's not that hard. It's, it's the attention to detail. It's, the, it's all that spacing. That shit matters. And if it's not there, you've got the shallow and the basic like drive coming at you. But again, can we get a chip on 95 up top to start us? First, let's watch the depth of that corner down here to the number one, the bottom. I mean, see how he's coming out of that? At, I mean, he's coming out of that at the, 50, at the 49. That's a six-yard route. Seven-yard corner. Just doesn't make sense. It's not how... You got to get more depth to put more stress on the corner. Nice job from Kenny Pickett. Get a conversion, take a big shot, big hit on the back again. You know why we're not chipping with 88 here? I don't know. We've shown to do it sometimes. 95 is tough to. I mean, again, what what is 88 doing? Hand on the back, give him a little push. That's not for me. Again, we got to find a way to protect a quarterback better than that. Boom. First down, though. Next one here. This is rough. I mean, again, I'm just trying to showcase the full picture here. Walk around this problem. Because to me, this is double post over. The over is wide ass open again. Would be a touchdown. Kenny Pickett either can't or refuses to see it. Or they're asking him to look at the wrong thing. Because we've got this empty double chip situation it sure looks like he's trying to throw over there to the left, but he just struggling to see the field. Like, I don't necessarily know what else to say here. The, I've already talked about it, drawn it up. This is almost always a clear to get this open. And this is, come on, dog. I mean, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I get all the Canada jokes. I get all of it. Trust me, and I, I think he gets at least a fair share of it. But that's that's wide ass open in the NFL. And again, even if you don't love it, throw the other post. There, I mean, really, all three of them are potential touchdowns. Now, I don't I probably wouldn't throw the one up top, but like you could. I just I don't know how that turns into a sack. I mean, the, the overcrosser is so wide open. He's like looking around. He thinks he, he can't believe he's not getting the ball. Right? It looks like he's looking to the left. Then it looks like he's looking, trying to track 19 right there. I mean, just, <laughs> oh my God, man. It honestly, it gives me a stomach ache, man. This is tough. And it turns into a sack from a touchdown to a sack. 
Just brutal football, man. Last one here. Score is tied. 92 seconds left. Fourth quarter. Third and 10. We're going to run mirrored speed outs with a middle field read or a basic. Uh, we're going to throw the speed out this time. And we just sky mail it. Now, again, I've already stated I don't love mirrored concepts like this. It feels like install number one type shit. But it's still kind of there. I mean, it's going to be a tight contested. It's the NFL. It's third and 10. I mean, I personally think it's funny, a little bit funny, like funny sad, that we have to throw these mirrored concepts like this again. Like it feels very like preseason week one type stuff. Here's that basic. Again, the route here on the basic is much better. But you just don't, like I'll be honest here, you don't see this a lot in the league. Like this looks like Friday night stuff to me. And the reason you don't see it is because it doesn't give you like a, a coverage beater. Like there, there is no like progression to this. It's one to two. One to two. Pick a side. And again, I'm not saying it's not there. That's the, that's the sad part. A better throw, it's probably a first down. Throwing with anticipation, yeah, you got to throw speed out with anticipation. Sky mail it. Again, for whatever reason, not a fan of 14. Okay. I, I just, it's the combination of the simplicity of the concepts, the static nature, the quarterback play not being good enough, the lack of detail on the perimeter. None of it is good enough. We'll see if they can turn it around. We'll see if it was more a coordination thing or a player's thing. I have a bad feeling that it's probably a lot of both. But we're all going to find out together. So that is a wrap on multiple levels for whatever that was. Uh, I feel like I'm on record a few different videos, a few different times talking about what I think are the schematic deficiencies of what they were doing offensively. We'll see if it changes. We'll see if there's more movement. We'll see if there are more modern concepts tethered together, less mirrored static routes. We'll see. It's hard to go into any situation where there's change and insert a bunch of new stuff. We'll see what it looks like. I'm not saying it's not impossible, but man, I don't know what the fix is because I don't think it was just the scheme. And I think the scheme was a problem, but I don't think Kenny Pickett's playing that well. I think that there's a significant lack of detail on what they're doing and executing on the perimeter as far as being on the same page, you know, the detail and nuance of running routes with any level of anticipation or kind of being on the same page consistently. It's just tough. It's tough everywhere on that offense right now. So I totally understand why a change was made. And really, you know, I think you could pull it back and wonder why it wasn't made maybe earlier more than anything else. But we'll see what it looks like. I'm curious to see what it looks like. Uh, the ideas I would use to how to change it quickly would be to get rid of Hank, get rid of the sprint option stuff, get rid of the mirrored stuff and get to a more modern, what I would say, what most people in the league are doing, get some play action, get some pure progressions. You know, for whatever reason, there were opportunities to work the crossers, the overs. Kenny Pickett just not seeing it, or either they're not asking him to see it, one or the other. So hopefully he can start ripping those, but we've got to find some chunk plays in this offense. We've got to find some explosiveness. I think they have some explosive pieces, but man, far from executing and being on the same page consistently in what they were doing before. We'll see what it looks like moving forward. Thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.